I am Aaron Lampe, ingracious persona non grata. I didn't think I'd be making another one of these videos this early, but here I am. There was a lot of confusion um, from my last video, which I thought was pretty straightforward. So I thought, well, I might as well just get this out there now, and maybe I can make points a little clearer that I failed to make clear the first time. Instead of doing a lot of that, though, I'm actually going to start off by telling you a little story. Our story takes place in a small New England town. Don't worry, there's no space aliens or ghosts or whatever. Uh, we'll call the place Normalton, Pennsylvania. Uh, we'll follow the adventures of Officer John Cockrell. Officer John Cockrell is on his beat, as per usual and pulls over uh, Miss Angela Strange. See, Angie's not from here. Cockerel asks, um, ma'am, do you know why I pulled you over? Uh, to which she responds, oh no, I have no idea. Um, that's probably what you should say. But then Officer Cockerel is like, well, you ran by a stop sign back then. And she's like, ran a stop sign? Well, that can't be true. I haven't seen a stop sign for a while. Although there was something back there that distracted me for a moment. I didn't think it was a stop sign, because though it was the right shape, it didn't have any letters on it. Officer Cockrell stands there for a second and says, What do you mean it didn't have any letters on it? And she explains that the stop sign that she ran was unlabeled. Now, Officer Cockrell can't believe this, but he does have a funny feeling about the whole thing. So, uh, he lets her go with a warning in order to further investigate her claims. Sure enough, when he goes back to this intersection that he's been through many times, he finds that the stop sign has no printing on it. It's just octagon, pentagon, pentagram. I'll figure out which one the right one is and then edit it in. Now, Officer Cockerell knows that not too long ago, probably within the past couple of months, the sign had been stolen. And so they had to get a replacement. And the replacement sign came in and was put up. And he was aware of all of this. But at no point was he ever sitting there looking at the sign for any reason. He's used to the sign being there and used to the sign being functional. So he just drove by time and time again without noticing the letters were missing. And when he starts asking around, a lot of other people start to come to the same conclusion. They had no idea that the new sign had no letters on it. How could they have not noticed? It's been like more than a month that they've been driving past it pretty regularly without having realized that there was something wrong. How could this have happened? Well, that's sort of how I feel about the way that people responded to the last video that I made. Now, I'm not talking about YouTube comments as responses. You wouldn't believe the shit I had to go through for a couple of likes, let alone getting YouTube comments. Overwhelmingly, the response I had from people in person was, Did you try clicking the sign up button? Jesus. <laughs> Now, that is actually uh, part of a phenomenon called panacea, um, a mindset of panacea. And I'll go back to that uh, before this is over, because it is something that's interesting to talk about. One of the people that I um, spoke to uh, afterward, I said, oh, did you go and see uh, Theory Plebe's videos? They said, who? They'd never heard of this person. I saw Theory Plebe twice in that video. More than one of them admitted they didn't even look at the image. They had a way of diagnosing my problem and told me what I should do about it. They, I didn't have a problem. I had an Instagram account before that video went up because it wasn't having fails to get into Instagram that I was talking about. I was talking about how it was possible for people to have reacted to my screenshot on Facebook of the events as they'd taken place. And they responded in an even more postmodern way than I had already described people engaging in on the Facebook post, they just proved me so right it was painful. This is what the screen looked like. Now, people watched the video and still didn't see it. So I'm going to just take a second here to let that kind of sink in a little bit in comparison to what it is supposed to look like. This is what it looks like now that I have an account. In fact, I think that the reason it showed up the way that it did had something to do with the settings being changed to Arabic. The reason that it showed up that way or the fact that it didn't work is not that important. The way that people reacted to it is what is important. And the reaction that people had to me talking about the reaction that people had was itself the same phenomenon. This is a system designed for people to interact with the system, not each other. A person doesn't need a cop to be around to know what a stop sign is for, but 
if a person encounters a sign that doesn't work, which is what this is, and the system doesn't have any people who can respond to that sign, and Instagram didn't, then we're not living in a society where people are interacting with one another. We're living in a society where people are interacting with a system. That system does not exist in order to allow or facilitate communication. It exists only for its own sake. In a capitalist society, your first assumption should probably be that it exists because it's making someone money. <laughs> there are a couple of very important points that people miss that I think I need to go back over just to make sure because I don't want this to be about, well, I mean, I do want this to be about me and me being frustrated with Instagram. That's the whole point. That's why the video was called this. It's because I, I want to go into asshole mode and be a dick about something. Um, and I, I'm, I am doing that. Fuck you guys. But more so, I need to be able to reiterate some of the things here that I wasn't necessarily clear enough about in order to turn some of it into a teachable moment. Normally, this is a struggle for foracitousness, but in this case, I think I just want it um, so that if this is from a standpoint of argument, it is an unassailable one. The first thing we need to understand is that Theory Plebe already talked about why it's changing. A business that provides a platform for other activities is not the same as traditional businesses that produce and exchange goods or services. In order to be a viable platform, it must have, in some way, monopolized the market. They get investors to pump a ton of money into their operations on the hope that they will gain a monopoly. These investors are actually gambling because these businesses are essentially providing their platform services for free until that monopoly is gained. At some point though, they have to start making money or the investors count their losses and back out. Essentially right now, we're in a world where all of these competing wannabe monopolies are giving it all away. It's like they're going into debt with people who are gambling. Let's go back to Panacea. In social science, Panacea is a reference to the mindset that things exist in a state of error that needs to be corrected. Everybody has some kind of problem and illness, for example, which is why we use Panacea. And that the cure for that illness is the point of whatever something is. That there is a problem to be solved with the world, uh, first, foremost, and only. And that's already a major issue with a lot of things. It's how people look at the autistic, for example. Um, the autistic behave in ways that are unusual. And so in order for us to be contributing members of society, we have to be doped out of our skulls so that we behave the way that they expect us to. Because naturally, everybody's first thought about the situation is that this is some sort of problem that needs to be dealt with. I mean, it's, that doesn't even really make that many autistic people behave normally. It just makes them annoying faster. <laughs> Everyone's immediate thought was that I had a problem that needed to be solved and they had a suggestion for how to solve that problem. The problem that they saw me addressing because of how they're used to thinking about things and the state of framing that they were in, which I describe in the video, was a problem that in as much as it existed, I had solved before the video was posted. The real problem I had was that they were looking at the image and not seeing how it was weird or different, or even addressing the fact that it was weird or different. That's sort of what this headspace is about. Whole world is made up of simple questions that take no real time or effort to get to the bottom of. Why would we need qualitative understanding of the world around us when we know that C's get degrees? And when I say C's get degrees, it has a double meaning, because it's also common knowledge in academia that in standardized testing, circling the third answer down, circling C, comes with something like a 70% chance of getting through because defaulting to C makes it easier to take exams. It doesn't matter what the exam's about. It doesn't matter what the information is. When you know how the system works, you work for the system's sake in order to get to the system. They care about passing tests. That's all that matters. And in that same way of everything being a very simple problem, clicking the button should solve that problem for you. The system is quick and efficient, and thus our view of society is the same. Because it's how we're educated. It's what we're raised in. That view is straight up wrong. People who watch my video without realizing Dave was featured in it, who thought I was asking for help setting up an Instagram account on the internet, who didn't even notice the sign didn't have letters on it. They're not interacting with me. Not until I forced them to. <laughs> Let's see what Dave has to say about entertainment as an industry. What if instead of you or your friends, the focus should be on the system itself? As subjects who live in the neoliberal phase of capitalism, we find ourselves online a lot. The spaces online are all made possible by platform capitalists. 
Netflix, Uber, Google, Facebook, and Amazon are all distinct in that they are competing not to provide us with commodities so much as a monopolized platform where we can get what we want. What is it we want? Increasingly, distraction. Platform capitalists provide simulations of recognition, social capital lotteries, quick gratifications of curiosity, or other forms of distraction. See, what, they, what it is that they're interacting with is an entertainment medium. And interacting with that entertainment medium, YouTube, doesn't require interacting with the people who are making YouTube videos, me. In fact, would that it did, because I could use people putting things in the comment section. In human systemic training and the digital solace of void of the internet have changed the way we communicate. In fact, they have replaced our communication with the system itself. The communication system does not communicate. It replaces communication. This is the sort of thing that Baudrillard talks about in Symbolic Exchange and Death, as well as Simulacrum and Simulation. Methods of communication systemically replicate elements of communication for consumption, entertainment in this case. There's nothing about communication left within a system which purely entertains. They're infinitely reproducible, soulless copies of the process of communication without context. Context would make it too authentic to reproduce ad infinitum, and therefore basically useless to us, because all that we want are things that can be control C and control V in the universe. As such, we must consume our entertainment media, social media, which is no more social than watching a Marvel film, sitting quietly in a theater, listening to the amazing soundtrack, watching the incredible special effects, alienated from all of the people you came to the theater with sitting around you, alone in the dark, on purpose. We will discuss the, uh, the work of Jean Baudrillard, a French social theorist. Uh, actually, that now is a misnomer since one of Baudrillard's theses is the disappearance of the social. In the view of Baudrillard, society has reached a point at which it has literally been overcome by its technology, and the new and important issues aren't about uh, things like the non-believer or the non-offender, uh, uh, but about the non-person. In the world of Baudrillard, social relations have disappeared between humans because humans have begun to disappear. In fact, Baudrillard thinks that reality itself is in the process of disappearing, the real, what has been l learned and understood under the name of the real. The postmodern is a blurring of the lines between human beings and machines, a blurring of the line between reality and image. It is uh, a society, or I can't even really use that word anymore, it is a world, if you will, a, gr uh, a grouping of the world in which reality is simply that which can be simulated, Xeroxed, copied. Baudrillard argues that this process is that one of the central things is the way in which we, that, that, that's changed us fundamentally and has helped to bring our relations as humans to a close. People do not tend to become learned through YouTube videos. Rather, they use them to be entertained or to reinforce their beliefs without any kind of personal connection. They alienate themselves from the people they know in order to become less charismatic, less skilled in interaction. They use the videos we produce for education, in effect, to make themselves less there is no social, only media. There is only entertainment. We are addicts. We would give anything for it. But we've already given everything.